today we're going to talk about Power BI. Um, Power BI is, we're working on lots and lots of different things inside of Power BI. And as Guru was mentioning, one of the core things about Power BI is being able to get and mash up data from all different places. Um, so what I'm going to do today is kind of show you end-to-end -end what Power BI is and what Power BI has to offer, and I'll offer some sneak peek into the future as well, uh, something that we're, we're working on right now um, that is not publicly available yet, but uh, it has been demoed publicly, so I can demo it here as well. Um, so without that, let's get started. Um, yeah, so we're going to do end-to-end, -end, and it's going to be mostly demos. Uh, I don't have a lot of slides. I like doing demos, so that's what we're going to do mostly. So we're going to do a few things. We're going to do, I think, three slides about what is Power BI, and then we're going to look at uh, demos. Uh, we're going to see how we can discover and import data using Power Query. Uh, we're going to look at how we can analyze and model data with Power Pivot. We're going to visualize data with Power View. And Power BI is kind of like a brand name for a bunch of products underneath. Power Query, Power Pivot, Power View. And we'll look at all of them to see what they actually mean and what you can do with them. Um, then we're going to look into, OK, so now I've built this analytical information on top of my data, and I want to share it with others. And I want to share it with others. Um, so I can share this information with others using Office 365. And in Office 365, we have some additional capabilities. Because we now we have your data available in the cloud with our services in the back end. So we can, do, uh, we can ask, ask questions on your, on your data and get answers. Uh, we can schedule data refresh. So let's say you have data on-prem on or somewhere, and you want to automatically schedule the data to refresh every night, you can do it. And as last step, we're going to look into some dashboards that we're going to work on here going forward. OK, so what is Power BI and what is self-service BI? Um, in, I think, 2010, we introduced Power Pivot, which was our first self-service BI tool. Before that, we were really heavy into big cubes, analysis services, uh, reporting services, uh, really the realm of IT. And really, it needed a, a big project. It needed all kinds of involvement from IT to get data going and get data started. Um, the biggest thing was it kind of led to freedom of the users just grabbing data anywhere because they didn't get the data fast enough from their IT department. Like, hey, I want to get these numbers. Uh, OK, yeah, we'll have to make a change in the data warehouse, and then we have to change the cubes. And it just takes a long time for me to get the data that I need. So they find ways around that data uh, by loading into Excel, in Access, in all kinds of ways that are out of the control of IT. So what we've introduced in 2010 is a product called Power Pivot, which is the first version of a big analysis services cube sitting inside of Excel. And with that power, you can actually do build kind of a cube without you even knowing it. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at all of that uh, in today's session uh, inside of Excel. The interesting thing is there needs to be a, because we haven't really solved the problem if you just give more power to the end users and they don't know, uh, and IT still doesn't know what's going on. So there's also a capability there that as soon as people start sharing it to Office 365 or uh, SharePoint uh, on-prem, then there's a, a tool that allows you to see and gain oversight of what users are doing. So we have two places. We have insights in Excel. And as of Excel 2013, the latest version of Office, we ship actually as part of Office 2013. So if you have Office 2013, you will have Power Pivot installed by default. Um, and Power View as well. So this means two out of the three checkboxes of things you can do inside of Excel are installed by default in Excel 2013. So you can discover data using a tool called Power Query, and we'll look at them in a second. Uh, Power Query is a tool that is web downloadable for free, and you can install it into Excel 2010 or Excel 2013. So it allows you to discover and mash up data. Uh, the second place is analyzing data. And you do that by building a model, by creating a model uh, inside of Excel. And again, those are available for Excel 2010 and Excel 2013. In Excel 2010, they're free downloadable, in Excel 2013, it just comes with Excel. And the last step is visualizing the data. And this means I want to visualize the data that I used, and we use Power View or Excel pivot tables or Power Map to do so. 
Then when you've built that solution inside of Excel, you can share it to SharePoint or Office 65 where you can collaborate with others. They don't need to install Excel, they can just work and see the data. Uh, you can find data using Q&A and we also have a mobile solution that you can run. Uh, I won't demo this today, but it is available in the, in the App Store. So with that, let's dive a little bit into self-service in Excel. So again, the same three pillars, now a little bit more flushed out. Um, we can discover, we can search and combine public and ex internal data using Power Query. Um, you can model and analyze hundreds and millions of rows of data right there in Excel on your desktop. So what happens is, um, what we have in installed on your Excel and when you install Power Pivot is an in-memory column store index that actually allows you, to, when you import data, to compress data in an incredible fashion, like 10x to 15x compression, uh, right there in Excel. So you can have hundreds of millions of rows of data right there in Excel without too much memory pressure. And it's gonna be blazing fast as well. Um, the last piece is visualizing that data because if you have fast access to lots of data, you can visualize and analyze it and mostly exploring the data using Power View and Power Maps. So I think that's probably enough for slides. Let's go ahead and, and look at the actual products. So let's switch over to Excel. And what I have here is Excel, to Excel 2013. And I've loaded in Power Query, which I downloaded. Let me zoom in because it's a huge screen. Um, we have Power Query that I downloaded for free from the web and installed into Excel. And what you can do with Power Query is find data, search for publicly available data, or import it from any place that I know of data is. And Power Query supports a, a big set of of, of data sets and, and data sources as well. So one of the things that I can do is I can do an online search. And an online search allows me to search, let's see if we can find something for BizTalk. I haven't, I haven't tried this. There is something. So it actually allows you to find some publicly available uh, data sources inside of Wikipedia. And the data that it finds here, it's, it's you are able to pull in as a table and actually use that as a data source. Uh, let me hover over it a bit. So that actually, I'm not sure what this is. Oh, this is a list of marks of code names, which is not very interesting. But you can find all kinds of publicly available data sets and just start importing this and start playing around with it. Uh, we're not actually gonna use this, but I just wanted to show you. Uh, the other things that are possible is things like I can use from web. Um, and from web is deceivingly simple, what is being called here, because there are many things you can do. You can point to an HTML web, website that has a table on it and just import that table. But you can also point to a REST endpoint that is sitting out there on the web. You can connect to it using either your ORC ID credentials or a, a basic auth, uh, no OAuth yet, but uh, we're working on that. Uh, you can point to a REST endpoint on there. It downloads JSON. Power Query has a native understanding of JSON, so you can import the data and mash it up into a table format for your analysis, real simple. Uh, so you can use from web to do that. Of course, from file, so we import data from Excel, CSV, XML, text. Um, databases, of course, I'm gonna kinda skip this because this is probably from SQL Server, Access, uh, Analysis Services, from Azure, some Azure data, uh, Azure SQL, Azure Marketplace, HD Insight, Blob Storage, Table Storage, all these things you can point to and start meshing up data right there in Excel. And we'll, we'll show that in a second. And from other sources. So you can have a SharePoint list, you can have OData feeds, HDFS, uh, Active Directory, uh, Exchange, SAP, Salesforce, ODBC. So all kinds of data sources you can get to right there for in Power Query. And then you can start importing that data and, we'll, and I'll show you that, what that means. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import some data directly from a SQL Azure database. So I actually connected to this one before and I, it's hard to, for me to actually remember this incredible long name. So I click, uh, I've connected to this before. And now I see a list of tables in my Azure database. I can click on this guy, on the database that I want, MacMidi, and I want to actually import my devices. And I click on edit, and it opens up my Power Query editor. And it says I already loaded in the preview uh, some time ago, but what I can now start doing is, I can now start playing around with this data, and I can now start adding things like 
uh, filters, I can add custom columns with some uh, formulas. Um, so I can do things in here like uh, text filters that I can add. I can do right mouse click and kind of get things like remove columns, change the type, transform it, replace some values, splitting columns, grouping, all kinds of things to kind of clean up my data. Uh, Power Query is also what we kind of call self-service ETL. So you can kind of play around with it yourself right there in Excel. Uh, unpivoting. Um, in this case, I'm going to just import this data. And I'm going to, instead of us all watching me import uh, a bunch of million rows into Excel, I've already done this ahead of time. So what I've done is imported a few tables. I've imported the device table, I've imported the political geography table, a product table, an invoice table with 15 million rows, and a date table. And they're all living inside of my Excel right now. I can hover over them, I can see what we actually did. In this case, it's pretty boring. I just imported directly from SQL into Power Query. I didn't do anything special. But uh, one of the requirements that I had when I started building this is they didn't just want to use my revenue amount, the standard revenue that I have here. They actually want to combine the revenue amount with some target values. And the target values actually come from an Excel spreadsheet. So I want to mash up the data that comes from a SQL Azure database into, uh, together with an Excel spreadsheet, and mash that up into a single uh, model and a single data visualization. So what I have here is an Excel spreadsheet, as you've probably seen many of them. Um, you see a city name, you see a product name, you see nice on all the columns the months of the year, and then you see the actual values in here. So this is a format that is every Excel user in the world uses to do their, their, uh, their, their targets and all of those kinds of things. This is not a format that leads very well to for a modeling. This is not a format that leads very well into actually storing this into a database. So there's steps that we need to do to get this into the right format. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import this. So I'm gonna close this down. And I'm gonna say uh, from file, from Excel, I'm gonna actually move in here to my presentations. I'm gonna select my revenue target file. I press okay. Now it's gonna start imp importing. It evaluated the table, the, the schema, and it actually detected two things. It detected there's a worksheet called target revenue, and there's a table, an Excel table, that's also called target revenue. So what I'm gonna do is just select the table, and I'm gonna press edit, and it's gonna open it up inside of Excel, inside of Power Query. You see the same table now showing up here inside this table. The first thing that I want to do is, I want to get rid of those columns, and I want to make them into table, into, into values of a single uh, column. I'm gonna unpivot them. So I'm gonna click on unpivot columns, and I'm gonna press okay, and now it automatically unpivoted all the columns, so we now see the month values on rows, and the target values on here as well. But the rest is still the same. Uh, this in the past was a nightmare to do, with any of the tools, and even inside of Excel, it's pretty hard to do. Now it's just two clicks and you're able to do so. Um, so I'm gonna go in rename and click month. And I'm gonna click this guy to co be called rename column. I'm gonna call the target revenue. And I'm gonna change the table, the table name as well to call, be called target revenue, which is a revenue target. And the other thing that we see here is, we see some nulls. Those are also pretty bad for any database design or anything that I, that I need to do to connect my data up. So what I want to do is, because I unpivoted them and it doesn't know what to do with it, what I can do is I can go in here, select these two columns and say, okay, yeah, fill them down. So it uses the value from the previous column and just appends it in here. So now it automatically fills up any blank with the previous value which is exactly what I want. Um, the other thing that I want to do is, because they're actually dates, the rest of my database or my model contains actual dates. So I want to be able to mix and match the two together. So what I can do is add a custom column that actually generates a date based on the month number that I have here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and say add custom column. And I'm gonna call it date. And I'm gonna write a formula in here it's called date, and I'll zoom in in a second, because it's probably not readable at all. 
month, comma one. So there's a language underneath everything that we're doing called M. Um, so what I'm writing here is, is this simple formula that says, at a date of the year 2012, the month using the, the month value from the column, comma one is the first day. Um, so what happens now is I press OK. It's going to add that calculation here. It actually gives me an error. It's interesting. OK, because I, this was the wrong type. I'm going to change this to a whole number. Now it should start working, I hope. Ah. So now, this actually brings us to another interesting point. Um, what we have on the right is you see all the applied steps. What Power Query does is it keeps track of all the steps that we're doing. So every step that I've done in the past, it keeps track of in here. And I can actually go back, I can move back and move forward. So what actually happened now is you see the bottom step is where I changed the type, but in the previous step I actually added my custom calculation. So I actually need to swap those two around for, before, for me to actually work. So what I'm gonna do is actually get rid of this here. I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna click on whole number here. I'm gonna insert a step. I'm gonna click on added custom and now you see the date show up. So what I can do is if I go back, I can go back and forth. So I can go back to the first step all the way back up. I can go to the next step and you see all the steps are still available so I can actually easily debug what's going on. Um, but what's even more interesting and it's probably uh, interesting for you guys as well, it's because I, I love this stuff as well. If we go into view, I can go into advanced editor and now there's a whole script language under the covers that actually is, it talks to every step that I just done. Um, this kind of got pretty complicated and you can do much, much more with this scripting language under the covers than you can, than you can actually do with the UI. I uh, just wanted to point that out. Press OK. So now the data is here and this is exactly what I wanted. I can probably clean something up. So the month column I don't need anymore. But what I can do is here save close and load. And I'm going to choose close and load two. And I can actually choose what I want to do. I can do two things. I can just load it as a table into my Excel, or I can say add it to the data model. And in that case, it's gonna be loaded into our Power Pivot data model under the covers uh, to be able to be matched up with anything else. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm only gonna create a connection. And the reason that the other ones are here is, let's say there are people who just wanna use Power Query with plain old native Excel, uh, you can do so as well. So you can load all the data into a regular Excel table and then do whatever Excel magic the Excel jockeys do. Press load. And now the data gets loaded into the same model. You see data gets added here. See device, political geography, product, invoice, date table, and revenue target. And it's loading it to the data model from my Excel spreadsheet. And now the data is being loaded in. So now we've used Power Query to add some data from um, SQL Azure database and, a, and, and an Excel spreadsheet together into a single model. But what can we do with this now? And how can we work with this? And how can we get a single result out of this? So now we go over to the next step where we move from Power Query into Power Pivot. Um, so what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna swap over to Power Pivot ribbon. And here we can see something that's called the manage the data model. So now, and I don't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to use this, but I like showing this because it shows a little bit more clearly what's going on. So you go into manage, and now you see the same tables here again. So you see the device, the political geography, the products, the invoices, the date table, and the revenue target. And again, you can see here that this 15 million rows of data. It's pretty easy for me to play around to this. I can do things here like sorting, smallest to the largest, and you see it sorts over 15 million rows with ease, no, no problem. I can clear sorting it, so I'm working on the live set of data uh, right as I'm playing with it. And I can do a few things here, because the reason uh, what we're doing here is we are modeling. And there are a few reasons why we want to do this and why we need to be in here. Is, and there's two target audiences in what we're doing. Is one, my boss comes in my office and asks me, I want this number for, for tomorrow's meeting at two o'clock. Then you're probably just going to build a dashboard for yourself or your model for yourself where you just give him the number that he wants. Or you have a project that you're working on 
And then you need to give the same model to a larger set of users who are not as familiar with the data as the people who are actually building this model are. Uh, in that, at that moment of time, there are different things you can do. You can start optimizing the model for other people to use. Like you can start hiding columns. Like they don't necessarily care, the end users of this model, that you have something called device ID in here. So you can do things in here, like say, right mouse click and say, hide from client tools. In this case, you can use this column in the model, but the end users who's using it in pivot tables or in Power View where we go in later, won't be able to even see this column. So you can optimize it for them. You can make analysis easier. So that's all that we're doing here. So we're building a model so we can analyze it down the line. Um, so I'm gonna skip all the optimizations here, what I can do, I can do a lot of things. What I'm gonna do is I'm create a traditional pivot table. That's what I'm gonna start with. I'm actually gonna use this button. Press OK, and this brings up our familiar age-old pivot table in Excel. And again, it now points to the same tables that I just saw inside of my Power Query and inside of my Excel. Um, and the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna look at my revenue amount. I'm gonna click on revenue amount, and again, you see it just aggregated the, fifth, the almost 50 million rows while I clicked on it. That's how fast it was. But something is off here. I actually want to see uh, a better format. So this is one of the things you can do in a model. So I can go back here, go to my invoice table, go to my revenue amount, and say on top, format currency. When I now go back, you see the same format is now in the right currency. Okay, this was just a single table. The really interesting part and re really interesting piece here is now I want to combine this data with data from other tables. So what I'm gonna do is go to my political geography and I'm gonna drag in, and I'll, I'll keep zooming in because it's probably hard to read, drag in the region, but we see something's wrong. Um, you see the same number repeated over and over and over, and that's not what we expected to happen. And luckily Excel is smart enough to figure out what's going on and actually says, hey, um, you might need relationships between tables. Uh, we can click on create here and do it right on the spot. I'd like to show you in a different way how you can create relationships. And the other thing that I did is, usually when it imports from a SQL Server database or things like that, it just picks up the relationships from the data source and just pulls them in. If you have an OData feed and there are some relationships, it will pick them up automatically. Uh, I deleted them before we got here so I can actually demo this. Um, but what I can do is go back to manage and I can actually swap over to a diagram view. Here we see the same tables, but now in a diagram kind of a view. And now we can start creating relationships by just dragging and dropping. So I drag and drop my relationships and it automatically starts creating them. I can do product key create them, uh, device ID, create them, a date table, so we have a date column here. I'm gonna just drag and drop. It automatically recognizes, so there's a relationship one to many here in these cases. Um, it automatically recognizes what the shape of the data is and automatically creates the right uh, type of relationship. Uh, and the same thing we can do for now for the revenue target. So I can drag in my date here, and again, I need to make a it's a quick change. It actually said the date, the date was not in the right format, so we need to go back in here to my revenue target and change the date column. It says data type any, but we need it to be common real date for it actually to flow through correctly. Date, not decimal number. Okay, close and load. That's gonna add the data back in to the right format. Right, adding it to the data model. All right, so now if we go back in, we can drag in date, and now it actually is able to create the relationship. And the same thing we're gonna do for city. So I'm gonna drag in city here. We're gonna create a relationship there. Uh, sorry, political geography key. I'm gonna create a relationship here. So now we've created some relationships. If I go back in, now you'll automatically see that the numbers now start adding up to the right things. So now we have the central has a revenue amount, east has a revenue amount, north has a revenue amount. So we didn't have to do anything here, it just works. 
And the same thing will happen when I go back to other uh, fields. Because I now added things in, I added the relationships in here. I can do things like, I want to see them by year. So I can do right mouse click, adding as a slicer. I can click on 2011, 2012, and you see, it's probably you can't read the actual numbers, but you can see the data is changing based on the selection that I make. And the other thing that I can do is drag in months. So I'm going to drag in month. So now we see the months by year. Let's drag this down. And you can see the numbers automatically change. So I can just mix and match data from all these different places into a single pivot table. Um, the other thing that I can do is I can also add in now the target revenue amount. So drag in target revenue amount, and now it adds data from this other table as well. And as make move the values over here, and I can go back in, and you can see the data, the formatting is not correct again. So we can go back in here and change the formatting. Revenue target. Okay, so you see the values here. You see the revenue target and the revenue amount, both by uh, region, and you see them by month number of year. So we have a connection between all these different tables. The other thing that we can now start doing is, um, we can start adding some calculations. And this is where things get really interesting, and this is where the model really shines at is, adding some business rules, some business logic into the data model that allows you to do calculations. Uh, so I'm gonna move these, this one off, and I'm gonna add a new calculation that says um, revenue target to revenue, and I'll zoom in in a second. I'm actually going to my cheat sheet as well, so I don't have to type all this thing in, in while you're watching. All right, so what I'm doing here is using a, a language uh, called DAX, very similar to the Excel formula language. And this is the language that actually we can use to uh, create calculations. So in this case, what I'm doing is it asks if, if I have an actual value for my sum of revenue amount, then subtract the target revenue uh, by the sum of revenue amount and make it into a currency. So I'm pressing OK. Now it's gonna add it to the pivot table. Now you can see the target to revenue. And now we can start adding some custom uh, Excel um, conditional formatting, things like color scales. Um, I can do add some data bars here. And you can automatically see that things are starting to show up here. Right. So what I want to do is, uh, what I want to do is I want to divide my sum of revenue amount by, uh, minus the sum of revenue amount previous year by my revenue amount previous year. So when I press OK, and I should have set it as a percentage, but you can see the numbers starting showing up here, showing up here and I'll quickly set it up as a percentage. So now you can see the percentage growth. So you see minus 0 0.36, minus 3.8, 12% year over year growth. And these are the things that our engine is really strong at. And that's something you can do really easily within inside of Excel by just writing a few calculations. Uh, there are many more calculations in here. When I open this guy up, and I'll zoom in in a second again, is we have a lot of date and type. So uh, closing balance months, date add, dates between, uh, year to date calculations, uh, all these things are built in out of the box. And the only thing you have to do is have a date table that allows you to take advantage of all of these. Okay, um, so now that I've created this pivot table and I've started creating with my model is, now I want to take it to the next step. So I wanna visualize the data that I have inside of Power View. So what I'm gonna do, and again using a default built into the box a feature for um, Excel 2013, it's called Power View. So I'm gonna insert a Power View report. I'm gonna click on it. And Power View is really meant for a data exploration. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by doing things like 
uh, sum of revenue amount. And again, it's going to add it here. But it already looks a little bit different. Uh, the biggest thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to add it by um, state short. So by states. But one thing you might notice here on the right, it actually has some special columns. So one of the things that happens in the model is there's a few things. Um, we automatically try to determine what the type of the column is. In this case, we've automatically determined their states. So we've, we've now recognized this and we've tagged this column as such. Um, there are some things we can automatically detect, but there are some things that are, we can't automatically detect. This is part of the modeling, that you can go in and change the type of this. This will definitely help in your uh, power view visual data visualization steps. But what I can do now is I can go in here, make it a little bit wider, and actually plot it into a map. And boom, there it is. So now it automatically plots on the map, uh, using the states, the sum of revenue amount. And it didn't have to do anything with lat longs or all of those things. What it's actually doing, it's actually using Bing search engine to actually know where I need to plot things. So in this case, it actually tagged as state short. Uh, but sometimes if you tag things as place, it actually knows where to tag a Safeco field around the corner. It actually knows where to plot those onto the map. And you can do things in here as well, like you can drill this in. So now put in city here, let me zoom into Washington, and I automatically, not, you can zoom into the actual city level. We can actually go further down into zip code level if I had the data, I don't have it right now. But you can set up multiple levels so you can zoom in and you can zoom out uh, out of the map. And the other things you can do is of course you can add uh, things like uh, colors and regions so you can actually spit it out by region. Um, so this is really a data exploration piece and play around with the data that you have in here and you will find things that you've never seen before with your data. Um, some of the things that we also possible are See, so let's add my year-over-year -year growth again um, by region. Uh, let me quickly select a date because that's needed, otherwise you won't be able to do so. Uh, I can go in here and do date my year, selecting a year. And I can make this again into a slicer. Now I can select a year. And now you see the value showing up. But in my case, what I usually don't like to do, let me move it over here. What I usually don't like to do is actually use a table like this. I usually like to do it more visual. So I can do things like a bar chart. And what Power Query also allows us to do is things like, um, I can do visual playing around with the data. So what I can do is I can click on this bar and you now automatically see the others highlight. So they interact with each other. If you play and choose and select certain things, others start fading out. And the same thing goes if I go in here and I click on the east, again you see this bar now being grayed out. Um, some other things that I can do is, so let's put in uh, like for example a, the sum of revenue. Let's make this into a, a revenue amount invoice, revenue amount, and I want to see it by month label. By month, do not summarize, make it into a line chart. And you see here are the sales by month, but actually I want to see them by each region, again, because we're looking at each region, can drag this into my vertical multiples. Now to act, oh, because I've selected this guy here, you automatically see the same line showing up for every region. So we have things like filter, filter multiples. And you can now play around with it again. So if you click on this guy, it automatically shows the lines for the whole central region. And they're all very interactive. Um, this kind of shows you what you can do inside of Excel. So we've taken some data, raw data from SQL Azure, uh, compared it with some Excel spreadsheet data that we had to do some matching up on. And there's lots and lots of data sources you can do this with. You can use native JSON, OData feeds, REST, uh, all kinds of things uh, you can import into the Power Query. Now what I want to do is, after we've modeled it and after we've created this report, I want to share it with my team. So what, I'm, what I have is a Power BI for Office 365 where I'm going to upload this workbook and share it to. So 
what I have here is a Office 365 account with Power BI enabled. You see it on the left. I've ha I have a Power BI account here. And I've uploaded my workbook. In this case, it's called Demo Done. I've uploaded my workbook, and I'm going to click on Power BI, and it's going to open up my Power BI experience. And what I have here is a Power BI, and you see I've changed the workbook a little bit, where I have a few things. In this case, it's very lonely in here. There's only one workbook. But you can imagine there's lots of them in here, and you need a way to manage that. So what you can do is you can do things like, I want to feature some of the reports, so that makes them more highlighted. And I can click on them. I probably should have done this before, because it usually takes some time the first time. Um, what it's actually gonna, what it's actually doing right now is actually opening up the same workbook inside of uh, the web browser. And it takes some time the first time, but. So you see the same workbook here, and I've, again, I made some changes to it, but you, I've now shared this workbook with someone else. They don't have to install any of the tools. They can see the same visuals right here inside of Excel in the web uh, without having to install any products or doing anything themselves. Um, and again, the same thing goes for my Power View sheet. I can open it up in here. And Power View today is loaded on, um, and it's created in Silverlight. We're actually moving it off Silverlight and moving it into HTML5. Um, but you see the same thing is showing up here. And if I click on this guy, you can actually go to an HTML5 version of it, where I can do a few more things that looks a little bit different. It's more touch enabled and things like that. Um, let's see, stop loading. All right, we're not gonna watch keep on watching on this. All right, so now we're back here. So, um, so the moment thing we can do is we can look the workbooks up into the HTML5, we can look it up in the browser. Um, some of the other things that we can do is, uh, um, again, feature it, we can favorite it, so we can go to My Power BI. Come on. You can go to My Power BI and actually see the favorite reports. One of the other things that we can do is we can ask questions, natural language questions on the workbooks that I have in here. So one of the things that I can do is ask questions with Power BI, and because I've uploaded this workbook, now there are some things that I can do, things like give me the total total revenue. It actually shows me the total revenue amount. And I can do things like total revenue amount by product. And this will automatically show all the revenues by the products that we have in our table. I didn't have to do anything special. And I want to also see it by plan type. And automatically starts splitting it up. Um, Again, I did, didn't do anything special in the, for the model. It automatically, when I upload it, it takes uh, use of our service. And I also when I want to filter it down. It actually automatically understands kind of what I'm typing. So you see this line underneath what I've typed. It actually starts to restate what I'm doing. So in this case, where I said for 2012, it actually understands that what I'm actually asking is, OK, show the products and their plan types and total revenue amount where the year is 2012. It's in 2012 and automatically starts filtering the data. Uh, the other thing that I can do is I can go in here and say, okay, yeah, what I want is I want to have my total revenue by state. And again, the same thing happens, and it's gonna ask me if I want to geocode my data, but here, again, the same thing happens. It's smart enough to understand what the data is about and plot it in such a way that uh, we can make use of it ourselves. So in this case, it automatically knows it's a map, so I can plot it, the data as a map. Um, and this is something we call a Q&A, and this is a part of Power BI for Office 65. Um, and it works on any data and any model that you created yourself, because the data is loaded inside that model again, and that model is what feeds all of this data. Um, so one of the other questions that a lot of people usually ask and what they want is, yes, I don't want to keep uploading my workbook each and every time when I want to have fresher data. 
So I want you to refresh the data automatically. Um, we can do that. So one of the things that we have available in here is something we call schedule data refresh. So you can go in here and schedule this data to be refreshed. So what I go in here as I can say, schedule data refresh, this brings me to a window where I can start scheduling this, in, this, this thing. And I can set up a refresh schedule, now turn off, and I can say what it needs to refresh. So in this case, I wanna refresh some of the, the queries that I imported, and I want to refresh it daily uh, at this particular time, and I want to send some notification when it's done. Save and refresh the report. Now, this might be nice when, it, uh, when you're an end user, but it won't work automatically out of the box. Your IT guy actually has to set something up once for every data source and give you access to it. Because, um, so what is it that you need to do? Well, if you have enough uh, admin privileges and you're an admin, you can actually go in and set up a data gateway. So what you can do is go into the Power BI Admin Center. So if you're admin, you can go into Power BI. You can go to Power BI Admin Center. And you can see things in here like gateways and data sources. And in my case, I installed a gateway on my machine, on my box. And this gateway is just a connection from, from the service to a machine that I've installed and I've running a service on. So I actually have the service running here. So we can see we have a data management gateway configuration manager that I've just installed on my machine and it needs to sync up or link up to the service using some keys and then it's registered. What I now can do is register data sources that I can refresh using this gateway. So one of the things that I've done here is go into data sources, something called SQL Azure, and see this one's the only one that's ready. I can click on it. Let me go in here. And I've actually set up my SQL Azure database to be using my gateway Casper demo, that's my demo, using SQL Server and using the connection string of the database that I'm using. And what it now does is, when I give access to someone in my organization to be able to refresh the data from this workbook, it actually automatically knows which path it needs to follow to actually get to that data. In this case, it's actually a little bit of cheating because I'm using the on-premise gateway to go connect to my Azure database. But if I were to have an on-premise database, uh, that would have worked as well. So you can give people inside of your organization access to be able to refresh the data from that database. Uh, and it works through a service account. So you won't be able to actually leverage the actual user's credentials. It uses a service account. Uh, we are definitely working on making this a smoother experience so more people can actually start doing this without having to get IT involved. Um, that's a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, uh, IT is usually wants to be involved when data starts leaving the, uh, the on-premise. But uh, a lot of customers think differently, and a lot of our competitors think very, very differently about this as well. Um, so this is what our existing service is. Let me go back. I think I have probably a little bit more. Yeah, no, let's skip the slides for now. Um, what I want to show you as well is one of the things that we're working on right now is what, today the data is really static in here. And one of the things that we're working on is, in, is, uh, is uh, the evolution of the Power BI for Office 365 when we will add some features to it like uh, dashboarding. So one of the things that I have here is, is Power BI for Office 365. This is a preview build that I have running on side of my machine. But here you have uh, something that we call uh, the sample dashboard. And you can just create multiple dashboards on your machine. This is fed by the same um, uh, workbooks that I just showed. It just shows a little bit different and a little bit more visual uh, the data that we have here. And the other things that it does, and I, you can add multiple dashboards, like this is a sample dashboard, and this is a sales dashboard of the same workbook that I just created. But now I'm gonna give, show you the, the dashboard a little bit different here. And you can do things like uh, rearrange the tiles, so you can make it completely your own if you want to, uh, play around with these things. You can click on them, and it actually brings you down to our uh, evolution version of our Power BI uh, uh, reporting experience. So what you think you can do is you can rearrange the tiles. Um, you can go back in here, you can move between, between sheets. You can see my summer revenue amount here. The other thing that we've done is kind of like an editing experience. 
It's very touch enabled, so I can just drag with my finger and play around here with all these uh, shards. I'm playing around, it's hard to see, but I'm doing this with my fingers right now. Um, it's really touch enabled, so you can play around, you can mix and match with data, you can drag fields out of it and say, okay, I wanna create a new chart based on this, and I'm actually just does it. Um, the other things that I can do is I can go in here and say, okay, um, I wanna actually make this into a tree map. Things that we've been missing for some time, it's, they're now available, and I can actually say, okay, yeah, instead of having uh, just the, the plan type, I also want the product name and the details, so you can start playing around with data in many different ways. You can start really interacting with the data with touch and devices right there in place. Um, the other thing that we can do right here in place is, again, I'm gonna discard my changes, go in here and say things like, okay, again, this, so the, the sum of revenue amount uh, by date. And the thing that I can do is, I can make this dashboard completely my own. I want to have this data added to my dashboard I can just click on the pin button, and it's not pinned to the dashboard. When I go back, you see the same visual now showing up here. I can move it to the front, and that's how simple it is to start adding things to your dashboard. By just asking questions, pinning them, uh, playing around with them, and again, the same things works because it's using the same infrastructure. You can refresh the data, new data comes in. Uh, there's much more around this that I uh, cannot show yet, but um, yeah, this is an exciting future that we were going on.